basically threatens uh, America's hegemony, would threaten the domination of the of the U.S. dollar. So you've got your two two sides deeply entrenched. Russia, because of the security of its borders, and America, the dollar hegemony. Because what's happening elsewhere in the world, the large part of the world has got fed up by being told what to do by America. And what you're seeing is the enlargement of BRICS Plus. Uh, I believe today Egypt has formally announced that they have joined BRICS Plus. We know that from both public statements and private conversations that uh, the countries in the Gulf are going to join it. We know, for instance, that Saudi Arabia has sold some oil to China, which China paid for in RMB. And with those RMB, Saudi Arabia bought gold, probably on the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Mm -hmm. So in my view, that was a test case. Does it work? And the answer is probably yes. I think gold is very central to the BRICS plus equation. I mean, as to give another example, the trade between Russia and China is growing exponentially with Russia holding a large trade surplus. That trade surplus is held in a gold differential account with the PBOC. Hmm. Yeah. So what what the um, uh, Russian economist who is running the financial side of BRICS Plus, developing their new trade and currency platforms, what's now going to happen is that member countries can trade within themselves or even externally eventually on a currency that's based on 20 commodities that they produce, but valued not in US dollars, but in grams of gold. Okay, and, and you've mentioned this the previous times you've been on the program, um, as have um, analysts Alistair. like, monetary analysts like Alistair McLeod, who I know that you're in communication with. Um, so it sounds like they're already Kind of piloting this in certain ways it's it's yes. perhaps not not fully operational and maybe it's not backed by all 20 commodities yet and whatnot but they're already doing some some uh currency exactly. deal currency trade outside of us dollars yeah. that yeah. is sort of resolved yeah. Yeah. or at least backed by gold so you can see actually that when it comes to the gulf countries the same formula that china and russia have formulated will probably be used when, or fairly, let's put it a different way, when the Gulf countries make the decision, which will be a step-by-step -step approach to ditch the dollar and to use for their trade, for their trade, other currencies than the dollar. Probably not other fiat currencies, and probably it will be as um, Russia is holding a trade surplus in a, dif in a in a gold differential account at the PBOC. So the same will probably happen with the Gulf countries. Okay, and do, do we have a name for this new? No, not not yet. Yes, not yet. <laughs> I just call it the new currency. 
Okay, we'll, we'll we'll call it the new BRICS plus currency just for the sake of this conversation. And I, and I do want to move into um, some, you know, from the sort of geopolitical into the economic in just a minute. But Simon, you are based in Dubai. You are a commodity expert. You've done trade with most of the countries that we're mentioning here. So you have a real sort of practical insider's view uh, on really what the people in all those, those countries think. Um, so... You, you mentioned use the term ditch the dollar when when the BRICS plus coalition decides to ditch the dollar. You tell me, I'm assuming it's not going to be like one day a flip is switched and they're no, just saying, oh, it'll be a step by it'll be step by step. Right. So 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 for a good while, perhaps um, we'll we'll sort of see competition in the world reserve currency space. Right. So it's not like the dollar is necessarily going to lose all its trade business with these countries overnight, but they'll just no. progressively do less and less in dollars and more and more in the BRICS currency. Until there will come a point when it could be literally a ditch. And I think that depends upon what happens in the war syndrome. All right, so back to the war. So one quick question there. So if if the Nord Stream pipeline was sabotaged to basically um, break the ties between Germany and Russia, um, it sounds like you said that that was pretty effective. Um, you know, there's been a lot of recent allegations, the Seymour Hirsch article, um, you know, basically saying, look, the US did it and here are all the details. And I think that if you look at the, the list of suspects, even before the Hirsch article came out, the U.S. was probably near the top. Um, sure. I, I'm just curious, you know, the risk there is that Germ it could backfire, where Germany could say, hey, you know, you just <laughs> intervened in a, you know, our, our national sovereignty and, and you know, could create a backlash against U.S.-Germany ties. I don't necessarily see that that's happened, but I'm not a geopolitical analyst here. Um, what do you see as the fallout? Well, that? I, I think, uh, let's put it this way, I think there is not immediately, but over the next couple of years, I think there's a real risk that we'll have a change of government in Germany, that um, the German industrialists will have a larger say in the formation of policy, and that they, where has, where, where do they see growth over the next 10, 20 years? Not westwards, but eastwards. And I think you can well see that Germany will rebuild that alliance with Russia and China, depending, of course, on how the how the war ends. And then you have to ask the question, does that then mean that they join BRICS plus? I was going to say, would you have a, a, a Germexit? You know, would, would Germany break out of the EU? That's another question. <laughs> <laughs> I think it leads to the breakup of the EU. I think there's a huge risk that that will happen. I mean, I think, we could have, I think we could have even debated that <clears throat> the the sustainability of the EU as a political and certainly as a monetary structure separate the whole war <laughs> issue. Um, but obviously, you, you you throw a lot more into the mix when you have this this new triangle you're talking yeah, absolutely. about. Absolutely, but the war the war is causing this rethinking. 